Welcome. In this session, we're going to explore what people get sick, disabled, and die from, and how that varies across regions, ages, and sexes. By the time this session ends, you should be able to indicate the leading causes of death, deaths and dallies for different regions of the world, different age groups, and different sexes. And you should be comfortable interacting with the Global Burden of Disease website of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. Among other things, we're going to discuss some important trends that I hope you'll keep in mind. The first is that in all regions of the world, except Sub-Saharan Africa, non-communicable non diseases are more important as causes of deaths and dallies than are communicable diseases. You're also going to learn that the shift from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases it has been occurring for a long time, is very far along in many countries, and continues to occur everywhere. So let's begin with a few questions that can help to set the foundation for this session. Malaria is very common in sub-Saharan Africa. Each year, millions, tens of millions, maybe hundreds of millions of cases of malaria occur. Do we know who gets those cases? Do we know who's most uh, affected? Do we know who might die of this or who might suffer some um, other consequences? Uh, do we know how important malaria is in other parts of the world compared to sub-Saharan Africa? Twenty years ago, the leading causes of death in most of today's low- and middle-income countries were communicable diseases, like tuberculosis, diarrheal disease, lower respiratory infections, uh, HIV. Is this still the case? Has it changed? Why has it changed? And what is the extent to which the burden of disease in today's low- and middle-income countries looks increasingly like the burden of disease in today's high-income countries? Now, we often think of what people get sick and die from. But if we want to make health policy or want to understand what, our sens what sensible health policies are, are, shouldn't we also understand what people get sick from and disabled from and not just focus our attention on what it is that causes people to die or on their deaths. So let's talk now about the global burden of disease studies and begin to put some of these notions together. Beginning in the 1990s, a number of global health actors worked together to better understand the causes of deaths and dallies and to also establish metrics, ways in which they could be measured. Since then, they have regularly updated these studies, and the last global burden of disease study took place in 2013. Now, using this data, let's look first at the causes of death by country income, group, age, and sex. Then we'll look at DALIs for the same thing. So first, let's look broadly at the types of conditions from which people die. Now, in the earlier global burden of disease studies, the authors divided causes of uh, illness and death uh, into three broad groups. In the later studies, they didn't use these terms like they did earlier, but I want to suggest to you that they can still be useful. In group one, they had communicable maternal, neonatal, and nutritional disorders. In group two, they had non-communicable diseases, and in group three, they had injuries. Now, Let's look at the distribution, first, of deaths across low- and middle-income countries on the one hand and high-income countries on the other, divided by group one, group two, or group three. Do people in these groups of countries die mostly of communicable diseases, non-communicable diseases, or injuries? And here what we see for low- and middle-income countries is the predominant cause of death is non-communicable, there's a substantial, however, amount of communicable diseases, and about 9% of the total deaths in those countries are related to injuries. When we look at high-income countries, we see a really different profile when we think about the distribution of deaths by group 1, group 2, and group 3. And here what we see is overwhelmingly, 
people in these countries are dying of non-communicable diseases. There's a relatively very small, actually, share of total deaths that stems from communicable diseases. And there's about the same share of total deaths that comes from uh, injuries. Now, we know that when we look at DALIs, it's going to be a little bit different than deaths. So let's also look at the distribution of DALIs by group one, group two, and group three for the same low and middle income countries on the one hand and high income countries on the other. And here what we see is um, in low and middle income countries, uh, the, the real shift from what we saw in the pattern of deaths is communicable diseases uh, associate, are associated with, in this case, with more dis, a fair amount of disability. And therefore, compared to deaths, group one causes are a, uh, a larger share of total DALIs than they were a share of total deaths. Here the shift has largely been that injuries, which you can appreciate if people live through, might cause disability. Injuries are a larger share of DALIs than they are a share of deaths for high-income countries and non-communicable diseases goes down very slightly by the same amount that this went up. Now, you can also see in both of those last two graphics this notion of what we call the epidemiological transition. And that's a transition from a disease profile that's predominantly communicable to one that's predominantly non-communicable. Uh, many, many years ago, as the world was uh, barely developed, it's easy to imagine people died young of communicable causes. If we think about Norway, Denmark, um, the Netherlands, Germany, for example, we know today that overwhelmingly, as we saw, people are dying of um, non-communicable causes. And there's still a fair number of countries, particularly among the lowest income countries in the world, as we mentioned, where the burden of disease is still predominantly um, communicable. So I want and encourage you to keep in mind this notion of the shift as countries develop, they get better educated, they get better nourished, etc. What you'll see is a shift from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases. This is very far along in some countries, but it's continuing in others. So now let's probe a bit the specific causes of deaths and the specific causes of DALIs. First, we're going to look at the leading causes of death globally in 1990 and 2013. And in fact, how those have, um, have changed over time. So what we see when we look at 1990, and again, this is leading causes of death globally for these two, two years based on these global burden of disease studies. What we see in 1990, and this is for the world as a whole, a substantial sh uh, number of communicable diseases. We see lower respiratory infection, which is heavily influenced by the large number of children in low-income countries who die of lower respiratory infections, as well as um, uh, the more aged population. We see a substantial importance of diarrheal diseases, tuberculosis, uh, as, uh, and malaria. So in 1990, quite a few countries, particularly low and lower middle income countries, had not gone very far in their epidemiological transition. Their profile of deaths was predominantly one characterized by communicable diseases. And that's very much reflected in this. If you look at 2013, and if you were to draw arrows showing what's happened, you can see here a shift globally from a pattern of disease that deaths that included a fair number of communicable diseases to a pattern of deaths in which the only two, three, there are three communicable diseases. Um, one is lower respiratory infections, lower down than before because many children, many fewer children died of lower respiratory infections in 2013 than 1990. We see tuberculosis, which has also fallen as many fewer people in the world have died. But HIV, which really became prominent in the middle of these periods, now shows up but we can anticipate that it will be related to fewer deaths hopefully in the future as the number of people newly infected has declined and more and more people are put on antiretroviral therapy. So broadly speaking, this graphic also represents the epidemiological transition. 
and that is the movement from deaths that are caused by communicable diseases to deaths that are caused by non-communicable diseases. Let's now uh, break this down into three broad groups. One is low and middle income countries, two is high income countries, and three is globally. And I'm going to focus largely on the first two. And here too what we see is uh, quite, and this is for 2013 only, here what we see is the leading causes of death are the same in uh, both places. And that's ischemic heart disease and stroke. More and more people are living longer uh, everywhere in the world and more and people are when they live that long they die uh, often of ischemic heart disease and stroke. But here what we see in the low and middle income countries still is lower respiratory infections is an important cause of death again largely reflecting these infections in young children. HIV AIDS is a very important cause of death much more in sub-Saharan Africa than elsewhere. Tuberculosis uh, which is um, soon to become I think the leading cause of uh, death from a communicable disease in the world I think by 2015 it had reached that point. Diarrheal diseases which also really relates to young children particularly in the lowest income countries who die. And what we see here by contrast in the high income countries is a, a burden of deaths that's completely non-communicable except for lower respiratory infections and in this case of the high income countries this almost completely reflects uh, lower respiratory infections in the aged population. Now let's now break this down uh, by, by age groups. Okay? This is by, and we're going to look at deaths for three different age groups. 0 to 5, 15 to 49, and 15, 50 to 69. Now we know intuitively, everybody understands, that people die of different things at different ages. And this is a nice portrayal of that fact. Now, here in ages 0 to 5, these deaths are overwhelmingly impacted by the substantial number of deaths that occur in children less than 5 years of age in the world and overwhelmingly occur in low and middle income countries. Many of you will know that's 17,000 under 5 child deaths per day. And it wouldn't be a surprise, therefore, that there are kind of two or three broad causes behind their deaths. The first is um, conditions related to their birth, um, prematurity, neonatal conditions, uh, congenital anomalies, we call them, uh, very early infections at very young ages. And another has to do with uh, lower respiratory infection, malaria, which is so prevalent in uh, sub-Saharan Africa, we also know nutritional causes are quite important as well. So this very much reflects the kinds of causes that um, underpin the deaths of children 0 to 5 years of ages almost completely in today's lower and lower middle income countries since kids and other young children in other countries of higher income don't die very often. Now as we shift what we see is this is still quite heavily impacted by the burden of, disease, burden of deaths in, uh, in low and middle income countries uh, in which the majority of the world's population lives. And here what we see in this group is HIV AIDS is very important, TB, another communicable disease, diarrheal disease and lower respiratory infections is very important in this group including uh, often heavily influenced by adolescents. Because adolescents are in here as well and for many adolescents and relatively younger adults, self-harm is a very important cause of death. As they get toward the later part of this period, um, especially in low and lower low-income countries, lower middle-income countries, what you see is the early onset of non-communicable diseases compared to the ages at which people get them in high-income countries. Indeed, when we look here, if you live long enough, what we'll see is a burden of deaths that's not very surprising compared to what we might imagine, though it's not very comforting to know that even here we have a very substantial uh, share of deaths that are related to a communicable disease like tuberculosis. Let's look here now at what the burden of disease would look like in DALIs, and we can make some comparisons 
to the tables that we just saw on the causes of death of people both in different income group countries of different income groups as well as in people of different ages and here I, I'm only going to make a few a few points because I'm going to continually refer you to play yourself with the really interesting interactive website of the IHME but here I think what you can see is when you think about DALIs, just as you would expect, you begin to see in the leading causes of DALIs conditions that cause disability but aren't necessarily associated with very much death. And here, for example, what you see is low musculoskeletal problems, low back and neck pain. Here what you see, for example, is the same, plus you begin to see the importance of depressive disorders which can cause an enormous amount of disability, sometimes for a very long time and often beginning when people are relatively young. And globally we're going to see the, uh, the same thing. We begin to see in here uh, the low back and neck pain musculoskeletal issues uh, as circumstances related to disability become important when we think about what it is that people get sick, disabled, and die from. There aren't really such dramatic changes in the top 10 causes of DALIs compared to deaths, but it's really fundamental to understand that several causes are significantly more important when you think in DALIs than deaths, as I mentioned, uh, including musculoskeletal causes and including, for example, depressive disorders uh, as well. Now let's look at the leading causes of DALIs for the age groups for which we looked earlier at the leading causes of deaths. For zero to fives, looking at DALIs rather than deaths will not make much of a difference given the small age range we're considering and the extent to which children die from certain conditions. But when we look by, uh, by age group at the older ages, what we see is a similar pattern to what we saw a few minutes ago, and that is low back and neck pain, musculoskeletal problems, depressive disorders, skin diseases, migraines. We don't usually think of deaths associated with migraines. We don't usually think of deaths associated with low back and neck pain. But what we, we see here is we begin to consider the importance of disability in, in, in people's health, the importance of several of these conditions. And as we get older, of course, we see low back and neck pain, um, sensory dis disorders, and that's uh, hearing loss, vision loss and other problems of um, hearing, sight, and smell, for example, depressive disorders again. So here too what we see is the beginning of some important differences when we look by age group at the causes of DALIs rather than the causes of death and the inclusion in these causes of DALIs of musculoskeletal problems, depressive disorders, uh, and sensory disorders in a way that would not be captured by deaths but which is really important for us to consider as we think about what it is that people get sick, disabled, and die from, and what we might uh, do about it. Now, let's take one last look before we begin to play a little bit ourselves with the website of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation at the differences in the leading causes of DALIs for males on the one hand and females for the other in low and middle income countries only in 2013. And as we might expect, what we see is some important differences uh, in the two. So first what we see is men, as we probably know, uh, suffer from um, road traffic injuries more than women do, and as a consequence they die more and they're more disabled from road injuries and other injuries as well, quite frankly, than wom women are. At the same time we see here low back and neck pain uh, coming in because we're thinking in DALIs rather than deaths. When we think about females, what we see is that HIV AIDS is a substantially more important cause of DALIs for females than men because in many parts of the world the HIV epidemic has become what we call feminized. And here what we see for women too, one substantial difference between women and men is women are much more, have much higher, have higher rates of depressive disorders than, uh, than men do. So when we look at the two, they have lots of similarities. The order isn't exactly the same, 
But there are certain conditions that are more important for men, like road injuries, and for women, like HIV AIDS and depressive disorders, that show up when we're thinking in dallies that we wouldn't necessarily capture um, in, uh, in deaths alone. As I mentioned earlier, the data to which we've been referring in this session comes from the latest burden of disease study of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. And before concluding, I wanted to show you the very interactive and really interesting and valuable website on the global burden of disease that is at the um, site of the Institute of Health Metrics and Evaluation. I want to encourage you to look at this. I want to encourage you to play with it. I want to encourage you to look for patterns uh, in the burden of deaths and the burden of diseases and to look further and probe more on how these vary by country, by region, by country income group, by sex, and by age, for example. So this is what um, part of the website will look for, what will look like. And let's talk for a second about how this might be used. So let's start, for example, with what they call compare. And this part of the website allows you to look at the distribution of deaths or dallies by sex for a variety of age groups, if you like, for any of a variety of ways in which they've organized by country and by region. And here, what we want to do is the absolute simplest such uh, graphic. And this is the distribution of um, group 1, group 2, and group 3 diseases, as you can see, for the world as a whole, for deaths. So when we look at what it is that people worldwide die from, what's the share of those deaths that are non-communicable diseases? And here what we see, for example, is when you put your cursor on there, it tells you that they're estimating that globally about 70% of the total deaths in the world for all age groups and both sexes uh, are related to non-communicable diseases. Then when we go to communicable diseases, perinatal conditions, nutritional and maternal conditions, the group one causes, what we see, we see is globally for both sexes and all age groups about 21% or 22% of all of the deaths are a result of, of group one causes and when we shift down here to injuries, what we see is about 9% of the total deaths globally for all age groups in both sexes relates to um, injuries. And we're only going to explore this for deaths. I want to encourage you to explore it for dallies as well. But the purpose of these last few minutes is really just to introduce you to the website. So let's look now, for example, at what they do with these arrow diagrams. We didn't put arrows in our diagrams. But uh, what, if we wanted, for example, to look at how is it that the burden of deaths globally per 100,000 people has changed over time, we can look at how they ranked in 1990 and how that compares to the rank in 2013. And we're doing that by cause for deaths globally for all ages and both sexes, all of which you'll see here, you can manipulate. And as we talked about earlier, and as I'm sure you're now completely comfortable with, what you'll see is there's been an important shift over this 23-year period from a burden of disease that had a larger number of communicable causes in here to one in which non-communicable causes have become more important, and except for HIV, the communicable causes have become less important, as many fewer young children have died and many people, especially in low, lower middle income countries, many fewer people have died of communicable causes. So this is what they call an arrow diagram, and you can uh, play around with this in a variety of ways, uh, as you can see here. Now let's conclude by showing you what we call the heat map. And here too, we're going to stick to deaths for a single year 2013 for all age groups and both sexes. And initially it might come up with regions X, Y, and Z, but you can manipulate it as we've just done. And what we're going to do in this case is look at deaths in 2013 per 100,000 people for both sexes and all age groups organized by World Bank region of the world. And you can manipulate, as I mentioned, the same thing cause or risk, 
Death's or Dally's uh, location. Uh, and there's a long list, I promise you. Uh, males, females, sorry, I should have said males or females or both. And you can uh, also divide it up into a number of different age groups. We're going to look again at all age groups, both sexes, 2013 by World Bank uh, region of the world. And what we can do is, for example, if we have a particular interest in Sub-Saharan Africa, we can click on Sub-Saharan Africa and ask ourselves the question, what are the leading causes, what were the leading causes of deaths for all ages and both sexes in the World Bank region of Sub-Saharan Africa in 2013? And what we see is that as soon as you click on it, it ranks them. And you can go over here and see that in Sub-Saharan Africa in 2013, the leading cause of death was HIV AIDS. Next came lower respiratory infections, malaria, diarrhea, and then cerebrovascular disease. If we want to explore further, we can look at Latin America and the Caribbean, which we would anticipate, being largely middle income, would have a different profile of the causes of death for both sexes in all ages than Sub-Saharan Africa would. And indeed, what we find is the leading causes of death would be very similar in Latin America and the Caribbean to, to high-income countries. It's ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, lower respiratory infection, largely among the, the aged population, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, and, um, and diabetes. And let's just go back to one other region that's relatively lower income, and that's South Asia. We can do the same thing here. We know that malaria, for example, is substantially more prominent in Sub-Saharan Africa. We know HIV AIDS is more prominent in Sub-Saharan Africa than South Asia. So we click on it, we rank order them, and we see here that it's ischemic heart disease, cerebrovascular disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, then TB and lower respiratory infections. And uh, I encourage you to go to the website to interact with it and play with it, to look for deaths, look for dallies, vary them by different regions of the world, different country income groups, uh, et cetera. And I think what you'll find is this is extremely enlightening and will help you to see patterns and understand the differences in what it is that people get sick, disabled, and die from, and how that varies by country income group, by region, by age, and by sex, as well as how that has changed over, over time. So you've seen that the burden of deaths and dallies in all regions of the world, except Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, is predominantly one of non-communicable diseases. And hopefully you now have a much better sense than you did when we began the session of what it is that people get sick, disabled, and die from. In the next session, we're going to talk about risk factors and the key risk factors for illness, for deaths, and for dallies.